Hi, Mike here. I was recently involved in helping to organise a large charity dinner. We had 400 guests and 40 tables. And as is common at these type of events, we needed a seating plan to display on the wall so that people knew which table they were sitting on. Whether it's a dinner or a party or a wedding reception, one way to create a seating plan is to use Excel. And in this video, I'm going to show you one simple way to do it. I'll be using the filter function, which is only available to 365 users. And if you're not a 365 user, don't worry, there is an alternative. But unfortunately, I won't be covering that in this video. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. For this demo, I have 96 people attending a dinner. And what I've done is I've put their names along with which table they're sitting at in columns A and B and converted that into a table which I've called attendees. The formula in G1 is counting how many values there are in the name column of the table called attendees. G2, that contains a fixed value. I type that in. That's the number of seats per table. And G3, that contains a formula to calculate how many tables are required. As you can see, I've already sorted out who is sitting on which table. All I need to do is create the seating plan. So here's my partly completed seating plan. What I need to do is copy the names from the name column of the table called attendees who are on table one and paste them under table one on the plan sheet and then repeat the process for every other table. Now, of course, I could do that manually using copy and paste, but it'll be much quicker to use the filter function. This does the same thing, but without the manual copy and paste. Also, if I need to change the names or I need to move people around from one table to another, the plan will automatically update. So I'll go to A2 and I'll type equals filter open brackets. The array is the range that I want to filter, which in this case is the names column from the attendees table. So I type that in as attendees open square brackets, click on name, close square brackets. Then I put a comma as the parameter separator. And the second parameter is which records I want to actually include. And I want to include the records where the table column from the attendees table equals what's in A1. So I type that as attendees, open square brackets, click on table, close square brackets, equals A1, and close normal brackets. And then when I press enter, it brings across the names from the names column of the table, but only where the table column equals table one. I can actually then copy that formula and paste it into B2, C2, D2, and all of the other cells like this. And I can do that because the original formula was referencing A1, which is one cell above where the formula is. And that's what I want to happen for all the other entries. I want it to look at the cell above the formula to get the criteria for the filter. You can also see that table seven and table nine are not full. Table seven has nine names and table nine has seven names. And that's because that is the number of names that we have in the underlying data for those tables. So that's it for creating the seating plan, but that's not the end of the story. I need to print the seating plan and stick it on a wall or on a board so that the dinner guests can see where they're sitting. Now, of course, I could simply select A1 to C23 and print that, and then select D1 to F23 and print that. But it would be very plain. If plain is what you want, great. But for this example, 
I want to make the seating plan a little more aesthetically pleasing. When it comes to design and setting up for printing, especially trying to get everything onto one sheet of paper, Excel's not the best. So I'm going to take my seating plan into PowerPoint. Now, if you'd rather use something else, a DTP application, Word, or even something like Canva, that should work too. The fact, by the way, that I set the column widths to a certain width, 150 I've set them to, and I've set the font to 14 points, and I've set the layout as tables one to three, and then four to six underneath, and then seven to nine and, and 10. All of that was the result of my trial and error copying and pasting from Excel to PowerPoint. I trialed and errored until what I got fitted nicely into my PowerPoint design. So here's my PowerPoint file. I set the slide size to A4 and the orientation to portrait. And the rectangle that I've added to the slide is basically a placeholder for the names that will be pasted in from Excel. Now you've probably worked it out by now, but the background color of the cells in Excel was chosen to fit in with the colors of the image on the slide. I'll need two slides. I'll need one slide for tables one to six, and then another slide for seven to 10. Once I've got the layout of slide one correct, I simply duplicate that slide, just right click and duplicate slide. Back in Excel, I'm going to select tables one to six and copy. And then back in PowerPoint, make sure I'm on slide one and paste. The problem with pasting is it doesn't bring the formatting across. So what I'm going to do instead is click the drop down arrow next to paste on Windows. The arrow is just below the paste button and select paste as a picture. And what that has done is created an image from what I selected to copy. And then I'm going to resize it and reposition it. And that's what the rectangle is for to help me line that up. Now, of course, I don't want the gray background that has come through from the rectangle. So what I'll do now is with that object selected, with that picture selected, click on the picture format tab on the ribbon, click on selection pane, and that displays the selection pane, which shows me all the different objects that are on this slide and click on the eyeball against rectangle two, which I know is the gray rectangle in the background. And that hides that particular object. Now for slide two, because there's only four tables, not six, what I'm going to do is cut table 10 from column D and paste it into column E. And that way, when I take this data across to PowerPoint, it'll look more centered instead of being left aligned and, and looking lopsided. So I'll copy that back in PowerPoint, go to slide two, click on the arrow next to paste, paste as picture, position the picture so that it's inside the rectangle and then hide the rectangle, which as I say, is the gray box in the background. And that's it. There we have our seating plan. It's now just a case of printing that out from PowerPoint. Well, I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please give it a like. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, have an excellent day. Thank you.